and I'm back working on the Commodore again. Got another quick video here. Last video we put capacitors in the power supply for the 128. Now we're going to put capacitors in the 128 itself. I got to thinking that since I'm making these videos mostly for beginners, uh, it might be good to know exactly what a capacitor is. Capacitors use to store and release energy, and in electronics, uh, your capacitance is measured in farads. And since a farad is a really pretty large amount of electricity, we uh, in the electronics we usually use uh, smaller values, and the ones that are in the Commodore are all microfarads. When you look at the capacitor, it'll have the rating on the side of it, it'll have the voltage rating, it'll have the uh, capacitance. And the microfarad, it uh, uses the symbol mu, the Greek symbol mu, looks like a little U shape. So when you're changing capacitors, you need to make sure the voltage is right and make sure the capacitance is right. And also they're marked, uh, I'll show you this in a minute, they're also marked for polarity. They have the uh, minus sign on one leg of the capacitor. It's important that when you take them out, you uh, pay attention which way they go. Now on the 128, the board is marked, the positive leg is marked on all of them. So it's real easy to keep track when you're putting it back in. Well, the reason we end up changing these is because they are electrolytic capacitors. They actually have some juice inside of them. And over time, they can uh, rupture, they can leak, which uh, that's extremes, but they can also, the capacitance level can change. And since they're used to filter the electric signal, you know, because your AC comes in at 60 hertz, cycles back and forth, you rectify it, it still has a little ripple, you can use a capacitor to smooth that out. It can also be used, uh, the amount of time it takes to charge a capacitor can be used in a timing circuit, things like that. They've got lots of different uses. Big capacitors can be used to help start and run an electric motor. But the capacitance can change, and that's one of the things that's critical for the timing and everything, like in the monitor, because it has a lot of capacitors, and I need to go through and change all of those. They can cause problems as they age because they have liquid inside of them. A lot of uh, 80s and 90s model cars that had computers have capacitor problems. So that's one thing on those that you need to change. Same as same as these computers here, you need to change capacitors in like the, the car computer. So let's go ahead, I'll show you a couple of capacitors, show you what to look for as far as uh, their rating and their voltage. Use Console 5's cap kits for these computers and the power supply because they've already figured out all the capacitors that are needed. They send you everything you need to do it. You don't have to look them up. Otherwise, you'd be looking in the computer trying to figure out what's what. If you pulled them out and uh, read the rating on it, then you'd have to remember where everything went. You could also look on schematics and find out what you needed to order if you wanted to order them all individually. Uh, one thing on the Commodore 64 is that one of the capacitors we typically change to a different value. If you've used Commodore 64 very much, you know that on the run stop restore combination, you have to really whack the restore button kind of quick. That can be fixed by a capacitor, and Console 5 has already figured out they know what capacitor to change and what value you need. So they send the correct one, so when you do a 64, you change that, and then your restore key works like it should. Okay, here's one of the capacitors. You can see it is 330 microfarad. You see the little symbol for the microfarad at 50 volts. And down there at the bottom is that stripe. And that is your negative. That's indicating that that leg on that side is the negative leg. So now, let's get the computer taken apart and start changing these out. And I am very fortunate to have a really nice Commodore 128. And I want to keep it that way as long as possible. So today we're going to be putting in a cap kit from Console 5. Just like we did on its power supply, we'll take it apart, replace all the old capacitors. Make sure this thing keeps working for a long time to come. First step is to gently flip it over. Remove the screws on the bottom. We've got three along the front edge, one in the center, and then two on the back. Okay, once you got the screws out, got it right side up, pop the top loose. You have the connector there for the power light, pull it loose. On the other side, you've got the ground connector. 
and the keyboard connector disconnect both of those I got those off and that should free everything up so the keyboard comes off now to get access to the back of the board we need to take the screws out around the perimeter there and up there we should be able to lift that out as a unit And to get the bottom shield off, you've got little tabs you've got to bend out. You've got the insulator. Now we've got full access to both sides of the circuit board. We'll just start with the big one right here, 1000 microfarad. We've got a replacement. So we'll flip this over, figure out exactly which two solder pads are it, and suck the solder out of it. And that desoldering iron works good. All right, got that first one out. In the same orientation and polarity. Looks good. Trim those off. And the first one is done. So now we'll just repeat that process until we've got all these replaced. Okay, that got the first four done, a large one, and then these three here. So we'll move on down and do these two next. Okay, those two are in, continuing to move across the board from right to left. We'll hit those two right there. C91 and 92. And those two are in, so we'll move up here to this one by the video chips. And we'll move down here, but C85 and C80. So that leaves us with C88 there, 63, and 61 there, all in the video chip areas. Okay, that's got all of them replaced that I could find. There were four left over. But since this kit also covered the 128D, I'd say that's probably what the extras were for. The only problem I had was when I was using the desoldering iron, I got a little bit rough with it because uh, connectors are angled. So when I'd put the desoldering iron on it, I'd usually slide them sideways to straighten that up. That way you could get good connection with the board and suck the solder out. Well, I got a little carried away there and I bumped a trace. You can see that trace right there. So I took it out, put a bodge wire in. No big deal. I mean, the thing has bodge wires from the factory, so I'm not going to beat myself up too bad. But that was the only issue I had, and that's just a matter of being a little more careful. So now, reassemble it and give it a test run. Okay, we got everything hooked back up. Let's see if this functions. There we go, 128 mode's working. Let's do go 64. Yes. 64 mode's working. Okay, let's switch over to 80 column. And it's working. I don't have the full diagnostic cartridge for the 128. 
I've got one coming and it'll be cool to actually see to make sure everything inside the computer is working because I've never done that on this one. I've got one for the 64s. Sometimes you can find stuff that you don't even realize is bad. But once I get that in, we'll check this thing out completely. It kind of makes me nervous because this computer does have the uh, MT brand of RAM in it. And in the 64s, that is almost always bad. Now, this one seems to be running fine, but it'd be nice to go through and check all of it and make sure. All right, that's all I've got on this video. We've still got, I've got some cards to make for replacing the RF converter. I want to add some more VDC memory to this. Got lots of stuff to do. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.